2 Chronicles 7.14 says this, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, uh, some of you, maybe after I read that, you're like, finally, we're, we're talking about this promise that we should have been praying about for months now. Uh, and others of you are like, oh no, he read that verse because that is a promise that is given to the children of Israel at the dedication of Solomon's temple. The context of that verse is when people turn and pray at the temple that Solomon built, that God would hear their prayers. Well, that, that temple's not there anymore. And the people of God now include Gentiles that do not exactly claim the same promises that were given to the people of Israel. And so it's a little bit tricky to think through how does that promise apply to us? I want to tell you real clearly, I think that there is real truth there, great instruction and real comfort that we need to cling to. But I want to say just a word about how to rightly understand it. Uh, Number one, it's not expressly political. It doesn't mean that Republicans or Democrats are going to take the White House for sure and that we're going to you know, finally defeat our enemies or anything like that. Uh, this is a promise that Christians in China can cling to, that, that Christians in Uganda can cling to. Because today we believe, read Ephesians chapter 2, that God is building all of the church into a holy temple where his spirit dwells. And so the people of God today include the people of Israel, but his promises are global. And so the people of God is not necessarily a blessing for America. It is a blessing for the church. And the instruction for the people of God is that we must humble ourselves and pray and turn from our sins, and that as we do that, God will hear us, and God will bless us, and God will heal our land. Now, I don't know that that means that revival is coming for America. I don't know that the church is in a place that we are turning from our sins. I pray that we are. I hope that we are. I pray that God uses this moment to humble us so that we do seek him. And if we do that, I believe we'll find incredible blessing And I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but I believe that we will find greater love for God, greater trust in his promises, greater hope for our future. So the first thing is I I want us to pray this as the church for the global church. The second thing that I want to say real clearly is I grew up hearing this verse, you know, seemed like every election season at least, uh, and it could be very political and, and I want to say, if we listen to this verse, if we heed this promise, we also need to read the rest of the chapter and heed the warning that is there. Because God didn't just say to Solomon that if you repent, I will bless. He also warned that if you do not repent, that he would bring judgment. And and so I want to read a little bit further in the chapter. God still speaking to Solomon in answer to the dedication of his temple says, but this is verse 19. If you turn aside and forsake my statutes and my commandments that I have set before you and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck you up from my land that I have given you and this house that I have consecrated for my name. I will cast you out of my sight and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all the peoples. And at the very end, when other people who were not believers in Yahweh, who were not followers of God, see what God did to his own people, they'll say, it's because they forsook the Lord God who saved them. And you might say, well, that definitely doesn't apply to the church today. That's, that's, that's Israel, right? Except here's the thing. We're going to see in the book of Revelation, Jesus talks very clearly to the church in Ephesus and says, if you do not repent, I will remove your lampstand, which is a clear teaching that Jesus sometimes closes the doors of a church that had grown cold. And and so I want to say, especially to the people in my church, but if you are a believer in Jesus, that it is urgent that you kindle the love of God in your heart, that you seek him. That you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal sins in your life so that you can confess them and forsake them. And, and I don't want to be uh, I, I don't want to be unduly harsh, 
it's my prayer that we would experience the healing and blessing that God promises. And that's the goal, but we don't get there without humility and prayer. Would you pray with me now? Father, often we are blind to our sins and in pride, we think that we have nothing to confess or forsake. Would you use this moment in my life and in the lives of our our people and our church, of your people globally, to teach us to depend on you every single day for everything? Would you teach us to confess our sins and to hate them and to forsake them? And I ask that you would bless us with a great love for your commands, that we would find real joy in obedience, and that we would find healing. And it's in the name of Jesus I ask. Amen.